You're listening to LVB Podcast Show with your friend, advocate, and host, Alvaro. Hello and welcome to LVB Show. My name is Alvaro and I'm very happy to be with you tonight. Before I introduce our guest, I want to say thank you so much to people listening from the United States, from Canada. We have listeners in Australia, in Africa, in Latin America, in Europe, and wherever else they are listening to the show. If you want to be on the show, you can email me at lovevisionbureau at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter at lovevisionbureau. And you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, go into YouTube and just type in Disabled Lifestyle. Um, All right, tonight we're going to talk about scanning documents and real-time scanning and things like that. Our guest, his name is very unusual, I have to say, so he has to be proud of that. His name is Shane Lu, and he comes from Kentucky in the United States, and he belongs to the team of SuperSense application for iOS and Android. Shane Lu, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing so well, man. Thank you very much for having me up here. I love the energy of here already. It's so open and welcoming. Um, I'm definitely proud of my name. You should. I've never heard much. That's cool. Yes, you you should be proud of your name. And for our listeners, I'm going to call him Shane. So it's going to be shorter and easier for everybody. So, Shane, welcome to the show. Syllable. Thank you so much, man. Right, right. Um, For our listeners, we are having a little bit of delay, so I'm going to try to not... I I love to talk, as everybody knows, but I'm going to try not to talk so much and let our our guest do the talking. So, Shane, if you can talk to us about the company that you are are representing right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, You're really interesting, so I'm kind of... It's kind of sad that I have to talk now. I, I'm a little bit, I uh, feel like I'm letting the <laughs> listeners down. You know? we'll, we'll be back to your host soon. Don't worry. I'm just going to say this, this little thing, and then I'm going to shut up for a little bit. So uh, I work for this great company. We are called Mediate, um, based in Cambridge, Massachusetts, in the United States. Um, our team is divided between here in the U.S., and we have a lot of developers and marketing people in Turkey as well. Um, we're a small team, so we're we're a small startup company with a small team. Um, we have about 15 people working for Mediate right now, and we started in 2018 developing an app called SuperSense, which we're going to talk about today. Um, it came out on Android in 2019. It came out on iOS in 2020, and we've been putting out a lot of updates for it since. Um, earlier this year, in 2021, we put out Super LiDAR, Um, our navigation app, and then we just put out Readbit, our other scanning text-to-speech app, uh, and that's for the sighted population. We put that out in July of 2021, and so there's a lot of really cool things happening here, and and the reason that we're making these products, the reason that we're we're foisting these things onto you today um, is because these are are things that people have asked for. Um, We only make apps and features and bug fixes and, and everything because people ask for these things. These are the things that people want to see and people want to hear. And so, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, like me, for example, I'm not a programmer. I have tried many times to be a programmer and it's just not my thing. Um, And I know there are a lot of people out there who are like me, who are not programmers. And so what we do at Mediate is we give you access to the programmers. So if there's a problem you have and you don't have a solution for it, If there's something you need, if there's something you want to see happen, our programmers are going to make that happen. Well, I have to say that's the right attitude, my friend. Thank you so much. That's a great beginning, Shane. Okay, so um, 
what is SuperSense, how it works. Yeah, SuperSense is the scanning app. It scans stuff, um, so much stuff, seriously. Um, we start with the smart scanner when you open up SuperSense. That's usually the first thing that's going to open by default unless you change it. Um, and the reason we start with the smart scanner is because it doesn't just scan one of these things that SuperSense can scan, it scans several of them. So when you're in smart scanner mode, it's text, barcodes, and currency all at the same time. You don't have to switch. You don't have to tell it which one you're looking for. It's automatically, whenever the camera sees something in your area, it knows if it is a banknote or a product with a barcode or some text like a sign or a book or a menu at a restaurant or whatever you'd like. Um, and it will read it just how it's supposed to. It'll say $10, you know, if it's a 10 US dollar bill. Uh, it'll say 10 euro. It'll say the text of the sign or the identify the product and you don't have to hit anything. Um, you can though, and some people prefer to change it. Um, like me, I like to select individually. And so that, that opens up some more features as well. So um, when you go into start selecting what you want to scan uh, is when you're able to be a little bit more customized and, and choose specifically. So there are of course, currency reader, barcode reader. Um, but we also have two text readers in here. One of them is the quick reader. Um, and it's, I use it a lot for when I'm traveling, if I want to try to read a sign really quickly, or um, I use it to identify products because if our barcode reader doesn't recognize what a product is, it lets you label it. And if I don't know what the product is, then I'll use the quick reader to get the product name so that I can label that barcode. Um, and then we have our other text reader. It's called the document reader. Um, and it's designed for longer documents. They can either be one long, like one big page or multiple pages. You can use the single page or the multi-page document scanner. Um, and a few things make the document scanner really great. Um, number one is the accuracy. Quick read that I was telling you about a minute ago is very, very fast, but it's not very accurate. It's focused on getting you information as soon as possible. Um, and the document read works really quickly for a document reader. And it's also super accurate. Um, I get very, very few errors, usually no more than one or two errors per page with a document reader. So it's really amazing. Um, number two, it is really fast. Quick, reader, quick read is faster because it's not doing any kind of processing, but the document reader takes the document processes it so that it gets the best picture um, with the best scan and then gives it to you accurately. And it's doing that really, really quickly. Um, and number three is that it helps you take that good picture that you need. Um, so when you're holding your phone's camera uh, and you point that, sorry, you're holding your phone and you point the camera toward the document, it will tell you, SuperSense will tell you in plain English, simple directions that you can understand how to move the phone to get the best picture. So it'll tell you, move the phone a little bit further away from the document or a little bit closer to the document or move one inch forward. Um, and so it, it gives these really simple directions for how to get that really good picture. And then of course, with the document reader, you can share it. You can share the document, you can text it, you can email it, you can put it on the cloud. Um, you can save it as a PDF. You can do whatever you want with this thing. Um, there's more stuff. Uh, we have a magnifier in there. So if you want to magnify text, um, you can change the font options and the contrast, by the way, when you're in the document viewer, if you'd like, but we do also have a magnifier. Um, we can import PDFs and photos, which is really fun. Um, up to 400 page PDFs, by the way, uh, I think was the highest that we've tested it with so far. Um, and also in this, in this, menu, we have something called read history. And what read history will do is it lets you have access to all of the stuff that you've scanned in in this screen so far. So anytime you scan a barcode, if you forget to write that information down, you can go into read history and find the barcode again. 
if you forget to save a document or something that you scanned with a quick reader, you can go into read history and find it again. And that's only stored locally on your device, by the way. We don't have access to anything that you scan. It goes up for some of our features. It will go up for, to our server for processing, like the barcodes or the documents, but we don't save any of that. It's only saved on your device and you can delete it whenever you want. Um, and that's the read screen of SuperSense. Um, there's then the explore screen. So you have the read screen that we were just talking about with the text and the barcodes and the read history and magnification and all that. Um, and the explore screen is focused more on objects and surroundings. So you're looking at object explorer is the main feature there. And it just recognizes anything that you point your camera at. Um, that could be people animals, uh, doors, chairs, tables, laptops, keyboards, pianos, um, any, anything, just all kinds of stuff, staircases, uh, windows. So this, it, it recognizes over 600 different objects. And whenever it sees one, it tells you what it is. Um, the find feature is a little more specific. It lets you pick a category that you want to hear about. So say you're looking for the trash can, you can tell it, that you're looking for trash cans and it will only tell you when it sees trash cans. It'll, it'll vibrate and do all this stuff. And then finally, uh, on that screen is the scene describer. Um, and what I think is really cool about the scene describer is it helps blind people take pictures. Um, if you use the scene describer and capture an image, it will describe the image to you. It'll tell you a little bit about the background, what it sees in the picture, and then you can save that picture and send it to your friends or your mom or post it on Instagram, whatever you want to do. Um, and all of that stuff is, is what's wrapped up in SuperSense. Um, there's free training, free tech support. Um, if you request a call or send us an email, I'll get back to you and, and help you out with whatever you need. Um, unfortunately, SuperSense is not free. Um, and the reason for that the reason that we have to charge for SuperSense is um, a couple of things. Number one, SuperSense costs us money to maintain. You know, we have to pay developers. We have to pay for the barcode database that we get the barcode information from. We have to pay for the servers, all that stuff. And um, number two, it helps us fund other research projects like Super LiDAR, um, which we might get into a little bit later on. So you do have to pay for SuperSense. Check SuperSense. The, the subscriptions page under the SuperSense menu is the best place to look for pricing pricing because it's different around the world. Um, but I, I like to think it's pretty affordable. Um, and if not, we have sales where it gets cheaper, you know, throughout the year. So we, we do our best to make sure that anyone can have access to SuperSense, even if um, even if you're in you know any part of the world we want it to be open to all parts of the world too so we have a lot of different languages we're working on translating SuperSense all the time um, we're working on making sure SuperSense can read handwriting and read text in any language that you'd like we have i think over 20 languages currently um, so there's there's all kinds of stuff in SuperSense. shame for our listeners I think you love what you do and it shows, my friend. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, thank you, man. I'm so happy to hear that. I do. I do. I love this company. I love what we're doing for people. We're actually helping people. Seriously. I love that. When someone calls me and they're like, some people will, will be so kind and they'll request a call and I'll call them, you know, and like, what can I do for you? You know, I'm, I'm happy to help you. And they're like, don't help me with anything. I just wanted to tell you that your app has been really helpful. Um, and they, they say these amazing, kind things. And I love that. I have so much respect and, and gratitude for that. Thank you to everyone who uses SuperSense and who subscribes to SuperSense. Um, cause because, of, because of that, we get to do what we do. That's really cool. Okay, Shane. So... Um... It's exciting to have you on because for our listeners, I have not yet subscribed. Probably I will do that in the future 
when I need more. Thank you. Those kinds of features because I know the of course the application works very well. I I wanted to to let you know and for our listeners, just uh, 15 minutes ago, I was restarting my computer and my computer was not talking. Everybody knows I'm visually impaired. So of course I'm using a screen reader because my vision is very low. And- Mine too, man. Right. And, and so I said, okay, my computer is not talking. I'm going to do an interview with Shane in a few minutes. So what can I do? So I said, oh, super sense. <laughs> so yeah, what, what I did was I opened super sense with the quick reader on and I point the camera just in front of me to see if it can read anything on my computer screen. And sure enough, it said, welcome, Alvaro. Huh? How about that? And I said, yeah, oh my God, it's loading. Yeah. Great. So I, I love that. Say, yes. Kudos to SuperSense. It works. my Yes. Friend. Yes. I'm so happy to hear that. I use SuperSense for that all the time. If my uh, if NVDA isn't working for me or right, if, um, right, right. if my computer's stuck on the BIOS or something, you know, I, I have to look. SuperSense does really well with that for me. Are you using it on uh, Android or iOS? iOS 14.7 on an iPhone, awesome. iPhone SE 2020, which is a wonderful That's awesome. phone, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. And we're working on, even for our, for our Android people, man, right? shout out to our people on Android. We're working on new features um, for iOS and Android, and we're doing some serious updates to the Android side as well in this next few weeks. Um, so definitely keep a lookout for that updates on Android, and then we're going to be making new features for both coming down the pipeline in the next few months. So I'm really excited about that. Wonderful, Shane. And I have a question regarding yeah. handwriting. Yes, is sir. It, is it working now or is it going to work in the future? It works now already if you have good handwriting. So, you know, like some people have really great handwriting and some people have really bad handwriting. Um, so <laughs> it's always a battle for us and our developers to make our handwriting scanning better because, you know, we, we want to be able to read your kid who's in the third grade's handwriting. Um, but it, you know, it, it takes a lot of, a lot of time. So right now handwriting can read, you know, good uniform handwriting um, and then it's getting better with the handwriting that's a little bit messier or maybe is a you know like a cool font or something um, but we're always improving it um, just as you know to to cover more of the lower end of the spectrum so it does work it it will always need improvement um, but we're also working on improving it that's interesting. Definitely, I'm going to wait a few years until it can recognize mine, I have to say. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, I don't, oh I don't think God. it'll ever be able to read mine. Yes. yes. I don't know. <laughs> Welcome to the club, my friend. Yes. Yeah. Um, so um, I can write initials pretty well. Oh, me too. Me too. In capital letters. <laughs> capital letters, yes. <laughs> yeah, I can write the letters of my name, but all the other letters are kind of hit or miss. Right, right, right. <laughs> Um, so Shane, um, I want to know when you talk about this find feature where you can say, okay, I'm looking for the trash can. Um, what mm -hmm. kind of device do you need for recognizes this? Um, that is on your phone. Any, so your, your phone any iPhone? Will... It doesn't require yeah, to be a any... new, newer one? It doesn't, anything newer than the... So from the 6S onward, the oh, 6S right. is the oldest one you can have, I believe. Oh, right, right, right. That's wonderful. Okay. Yeah, um, absolutely. Now, uh, something else. Uh, can you be a little bit more specific uh, when it comes to pricing? Because most of my listeners are in the United States and they are thinking, okay, tell us, tell us. Yeah, so in, in the U.S. it's a little bit easier. Um, in the U.S., the price is you can you can subscribe 
um, for five dollars a month or fifty dollars per year or you can pay for lifetime access for one hundred dollars and that gives you access to all of the bug fixes all of the new features everything that we put out you know forever um, it's a little bit harder to tell in you know in Canada and the UK and, and greater Europe um, and, and every other region of the world um, because it's based in your currency um, and sometimes the prices change you know based on we have sales campaigns sometimes for our people in Australia or our people in South America um, so you never know what the price will be unless you're looking at SuperSense subscription page is the most accurate place to see it and you can also see any like sales campaigns or product updates that stuff's all in our social media which is SuperSense AI on Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn as well all right very good I have to say and, and I have to clarify this people may be thinking okay you are not subscribed to SuperSense yet you are able to use the quick reader feature yes I can because that is free Yes, some of our features are free. The quick read is free. The importer is free for photos and PDFs. The magnifier is free. And the read history feature is free. So if you only want those, you don't have to pay anything. Uh, but if you want to scan documents or currency or objects and barcodes and all those stuff, you will have to pay a little bit of money. Shane, I have to say congratulations for being honest and what, I'm, what I mean Thank by you. this is that when people are selling you something they say this is wonderful blah 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 yes no, nothing in this planet earth is perfect thankfully thankfully because Absolutely. it shouldn't be it shouldn't be of course and when you say Shane you may have to pay this money you blah 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 you're being honest and that is very important, you know, so I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah, I, I'm glad that's that's what we do. I mean, that's what we stand for. We're not going to we're not going to lie to anyone. We're not going to you know, we're not we're not salespeople, really. We're we're just in the community like everyone else. We're trying to do something that's going to help the community. So, I mean, you're helping us. We are helping you. That's that's mutual. We're all working together for the betterment of everyone in the blindness community for each other. You know, it's not about selling stuff and and uh, outperforming competitors and, and the market and all that. Uh, it's about the community. It's about the people. It's about the people. I agree with you, Shane, 115%. And speaking of technology, you are talking also about two other applications. I do understand one of them is for sighted people uh only specifically or it will be also no. for blind but yeah blind people can use it as well um you're welcome to use it it's called readbit mm -hmm. um is the app that i was talking about it came out in uh it came out in june of this year and readbit what it does is it lets you 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 can give it uh, a scan like you can take a picture of some text you can give it a picture from the internet or you can give it a web link uh, to a web page and it will read that text in high quality text to speech. Um, and so the reason I say that it's usually not for blind people is because or it's, it's primarily for sighted people rather. Um, it is for blind people if you'd like to use it, but our main audience is for sighted people um, because they don't have access to text to speech like we have. Um, and so Sometimes they don't want to read something, you know, because they're tired, uh, but they don't have great options for that. They're not as familiar with that sometimes as some of us are who are blind. Um, and so this gives them access to high quality text to speech voices. Um, it also and this is this is what I like using it for sometimes and what blind people get a lot of use out of. Um, it can summarize features as well. So if you scan a book, um, like a long report, you know, it's a 30 or 40 page report or, you know, heaven forbid, a three or 400 page report. <laughs> it can summarize that report um, using artificial intelligence. It can take that report 
and condense it using keywords and topic sentences into a very short summarized version so that you know what you're talking about and know what the text is about without having to read all 400 pages of that report. So that's that's a really cool part about Readbit that I really like. Oh, Shane, okay, let me interrupt you because this, yeah. is, this is very cool and very interesting. Summarizing text, this is important for so many people, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. Some people would say, why didn't I have this in college or in high school, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm in college. I'm in my fourth year. I'm in my senior year of college right now. And I'm really? like, really? We couldn't have put this out three years ago? Right, Seriously? Right, right. And what are you studying, if I may ask? Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm studying business. Really? I'm studying business and oh. music. Oh, and music. Oh, wonderful. I'm a musician as well. Yeah, I'm a drummer oh, and a percussionist. Really? Oh, boy. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> a lot to talk about. <laughs> there will be more interviews with Shane, I'm thinking. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes. Let's talk drums. Yes, let's talk <laughs> drums, music. I love it. Um, yes. So, dear listeners, I know you're enjoying this as much as we are. Um, so, you better I, be. I, oh, for sure. Um, this application, <laughs> this application that you're talking about, uh, is it uh, paid or free? Readbit. So, most of it is free. Um, actually, a lot of it is free. You pay for the premium voices, the premium text-to-speech voices. Again, because those cost us money right. um, to use them. So we want you to be able to use them, but you know, we have to we have to be able to eat dinner, you know? So right. um, yeah, you can you can pay for the premium voices in Readbit. Um, there might be something I'm missing. I'm still I, I've mostly I'm still catching up, honestly, with you. I, I'm still catching up on Readbit. Um, my main field is SuperSense and Super LiDAR, and this summer was very busy for me working on the SuperSense Live concert that we did uh, back in July. Oh. And so I've been working a lot after that on SuperSense and Super LiDAR, so I'm still catching up with Readbit. Um, so I, I might be missing something um, that you might have to pay for. So definitely take a look at the app yourself um, and, and take a look, and it'll, it'll let you know. Um, I, I know these guys have the, the other guys in the company have done a really good job making it very clear um, how the how the pricing models work for that. And I will say for now, Readbit is only on iOS, as is Super Lidar, of course. Shane, uh, I have a suggestion for this yeah. app for this Read Readbit app. I always want to hear suggestions. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you don't have it. Please tell the guys to allow importing Word documents into that because I know many people, they are working at the office, they need to summarize a lot of content. They get a Microsoft Word document that has a lot of pages and they say this would help me a lot when I can do other things at the same time if it helps me summarize a little bit, if you can import. Yeah. Um, unlimited Word documents. Is it possible, yeah. you think, to say? Absolutely, yeah. That's okay. definitely possible. Um, I think I think that we can implement that really quickly if it's oh. not already there. Okay. Um, if, you, if you can't import a Word document already, then I'm sure that we can implement that pretty quickly. I'm going to talk to the developers about it coming next week. Oh, we'll right. have a conversation about that and see. Yeah, it's... Uh, for the listeners right now, it's it's a Friday afternoon. So our developers, and they're in Turkey, by the way, so they're seven hours ahead of us oh, right yeah, now let, Eastern let, time. Let them sleep a little bit, yes. Yeah, they're sleeping. They're in bed. <laughs> they're going right. to the clubs. Right, They're, right, they're right, spending right. their weekend. So yeah, we, we will be able to get a hold of them until Monday. Wonderful. Okay, now let's go into this new technology for our listeners. I'm excited yeah. about this technology called lidar sensors and everything um yes i know i know shane and for listeners my iphone ac 2020 is not able to get the lidar technology i do understand that but mm -hmm. i also understand that this is very new so it's going to take time to develop and get even more powerful 
But can yeah. you tell our listener first, before we go into super LiDAR, what is LiDAR technology all about? Yeah, so LiDAR is light detection and ranging. And what that means is it uses light and the LiDAR sensors in combination with some processing on the phone to analyze the depth of a space. So it's taking a look at a space, figuring out how far away things are and where they're located. And then with Super LiDAR, we work in the phone's cameras as well so that we can then figure out not only how far things are, where they are, but also what they are to identify them. Okay, that, that sounds impressive. Can you give us a real life situation where super lighter can come handy for people? Yeah, absolutely. So this is our navigation app. So this, this one's all about traveling. Um, super LiDAR is so and it and it doesn't need any internet connection either. No Wi Fi, no cellular data. It works just fine with no internet connection, which is really, really cool. Um, so right now, Super LiDAR, and as you said, it, it is still in the early stages. Um, we've been doing a lot of development over the summer to add some new features, um, but they're, they're still taking a lot of time. So right now, what you have available in Super LiDAR, it's focused on obstacle detection. So, for example, you are walking down the sidewalk and you're holding, you know, Super LiDAR works on the 12 Pro, the 12 Pro Max, iPhones, it's going to be working on the 13s. Um, so you're holding your phone um, with the cameras, the back cameras facing away from you, you know, out in front of your chest. All right. And so if it doesn't see anything, it won't, it won't do anything. It'll just, you know, kind of sit in your hand. But as soon as it sees an obstacle and the field of view is really good on this thing, so it can see stuff up where your head is or, you know, off to the sides or down where, you know, a cane or a guide dog might be. Um, once it sees anything like that, Super LiDAR will, will let you know. It can see about 15 feet away too. So as soon as it sees something like that, it'll start playing a pitch. And as you get closer, that pitch will descend. It'll get lower as you get closer to that object. And then also at the, at the same time, the phone will start vibrating. Um, and it'll vibrate more intensely if you're getting closer to the object. And then, of course, if Super LiDAR knows what the object is, like a person or a door or something like that, it'll tell you what the object is and how far away it is. And it can tell you if someone's wearing a mask as well, which is really helpful. Oh, wow. Yeah, um, so you can, in this way, you can walk around, you know, you can walk... Yeah. across the streets or um, down the sidewalk and super sense will tell or sorry super lidar will tell you about obstacles in your way um, but do remember please remember that super lidar is, is not your primary navigation aid you know your right. own senses your cane your guide dog are still number one those are the most important things only use super lidar in a place where you feel that you are safe enough um, with your other senses as well. Don't only use super LiDAR, especially not when you're crossing streets or in other, you know, potentially harmful environments. Don't use that as your primary. Um, Shane, I have a question. Yes. Let's say I go to a restaurant, a very crowded restaurant, okay? Mm -hmm. I am waiting for someone and i would like to know if there is any free table in the restaurant do you think using super lidar or using the scene recognizer of super sense i'll be able to just say or type table and may be able to recognize what is free or not. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that kind of technology that you guys are developing would be very good for us 
in crowded places or maybe yeah. we are sitting down and we would like to know if there is someone in front of us or maybe it's empty you know it's an empty space things like that nature that would be great if it developed further yeah yeah absolutely no i, I completely agree um and you can currently you know if you're if you come up to a table um super lidar can scan you know and and you can see if you're scanning if you point it in the direction of where the chairs are if there's any people there um so that you'll know it'll tell you there are people um if there are people in those in those chairs um so that is a really good way to use super lidar i've also used it to find um i've used super sense to find people um, like in airports um, because i make smart choices and fly into airports really late at like two in the morning and there are very very few people in airports usually at two in the morning so oh. i had to use it to find the people there i've used it to find reception desks in hotels um doorways all kinds of stuff it does help a lot with travel super sense and super lidar shane um how do you find the receptionist desk uh with super sense what I did was I, in this case, um, I didn't know what the receptionist desk looks like. So, so something I'll break down for you is the way that we train SuperSense and Super LiDAR to recognize objects um, is by thousands of pictures of those objects, different pictures. Yeah. So it thinks that a counter looks like the counters in those thousands of pictures that we've given it. Mm. But sometimes this is not always true. Um, so sometimes, you know, somebody will scan their kitchen counter with SuperSense and it'll say that it's a table because it looks like a table that we've trained it with before. Um, and so in this case, I didn't know what the counter looked like necessarily. So I didn't want to restrict super, uh, super sense and say only look for counters or tables. Um, so I used the object explorer, which would just tell me everything that it recognized instead of something specific. I didn't want to limit myself in this case. So it was telling, it was looking for everything that it could recognize. And that way I was able to find it easily and it did it did actually recognize it as a as a counter so that was helpful or as a desk or something like that i don't really remember um what it specifically recognized it as but it, in that way i was able to find it really quickly actually well it's it's wonderful technology i mean i'm amazed how technology is progressing for us me too know? man um me too so i i it's have incredible. a an American question. Sure. Before, before your final thoughts, I, I have an American question. Um, yeah. Am I correct for our listeners when I say that Jack Daniels whiskey, or as you say, bourbon, is produced in Kentucky? <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> Kentucky is known as uh, as the home of bourbon. That's true. <laughs> okay. I, I like it. I, I have had Jack Daniels in New York City. It, I like it. I have to say, very nice. I, I, to be completely honest with you, I'm, I'm of age. I can, I can drink, but I never enjoyed drinking alcohol. Um, so I, I, I don't know why. I just can't stand it. I can't stand the smell of it, or the taste of it. Um, so all that bourbon, it's yours. You can have it, Shane. I'll thank give you. It to well, you and the Shane, listeners and anyone Shane, who wants it. Shane, Shane, it's hold all, on. It's all for you. Hold on, Shane, uh, for our listeners. I'm not a heavy drinker at all. I mean, mm. probably probably my good friend Ed Plumacher from New York City, who knows me, we have been in many, many, you know, good times together in New York. Yeah. He, he's going to tell you I don't drink much at all. But mm -hmm. having said that, I have tried Jack Daniels in the past, and it's really nice. That's all I'm going to yeah. say. Yeah. Um, I'm really glad you like it, man. Yes, indeed. Um, so Shane, your final thoughts. Yes. Um, I've had a really good time, man. Me too. Uh, I want to say that first. I had a great time here. This is this is great energy. 
you're you're wonderful I love having this kind with you you're so open and, and genuine and i i love that i i've really loved talking to you and being on this podcast thank you so much to everyone who is listening around the world much love and respect to all of you um please if you'd like to keep up with us we are super sense ai on twitter facebook and linkedin we are supersense.app on the web that's our website you can get super sense on ios and android um, we would love to hear what you think super lidar and readbit are available on ios as well um, and send us anything any requests that you have for feature suggestions any problems anything that's going well if you just want to talk to us about something please don't hesitate to request a call or send us an email we would love to hear from you this is why we do it is is for you guys so thank you so much for everything man it's been great to be here i say the same and before i i give my my closing remarks i want to ask you a final question and it's related yeah to that call you say request a call that call yes is for users living where or how does that work anywhere in the world you request a call and put in your phone number and i will call you back um, and we can have a conversation we'll have a we'll have a talk what, well, whatever you like what kind of platform do you use to make to receive those calls or make those calls if i may ask i mean skype or what, what yeah kind of... sure so when i when i get the phone numbers i'll call you back with my with through my skype i use ah. skype to make those calls and then it's linked to but it's linked to my cell phone um, so if you want to text instead you can text me um, there are a lot of users that i'll text with um, but also you know you can leave me a voicemail or anything like that um, but when I make those calls at first, I do use Skype for that. Shane, this is a wonderful tool for users, but this is not very usual. In other words, most applications do not have a request a call feature. It's true. Who, who had that You're wonderful right. idea? Um, goodness at the company i don't remember I, I, it might have been it might have been dahan our product manager shout outs to you man um it might have been emre Achari, one of our co-founders um i i don't know who came up with it originally i don't think it was me i'll tell you that i don't think it was originally my idea well definitely it's a wonderful idea i wish every single application had that opportunity because they you I know, have I agree. yes because there you would have options of suggestions working together improving the yeah. service etc it would it. be wonderful it's great yeah i love talking to people um it's a lot of fun it's one of the one of the best parts of, of what i do just being able to talk to people and and so much of those conversations are what shape how we move forward you know when people talk to us that's what decides you know, the more people that request something, the more likely it is that we're going to make that. You know, Shane, I'm going to say this. Uh, I do interviews with a lot of developers of applications in the world. Why not have a system where all applications would have this way of connecting to users? Why not have a request a call for everybody? You know what I mean? Why, that would be awesome. Why I'd shouldn't love that. it be possible for developers to create that kind of yeah. button? This is something for people to think about. I'm going to be interviewing absolutely um, people from, uh, okay, I'm not going to say the name of the company because we're in, in talks, but we'll see. But I'm going to be talking to many of the leading developers in the world for, for blind people. And I think this should be implemented even if you don't have a disability, everybody should be in touch with people who are developing applications for everybody. That's just my opinion, but we'll see. Absolutely. I agree. I'm with um, you on that. So Shane Lu, it's been a privilege to have you on. Kudos to everybody at SuperSense, SuperLider, Readbeat, and everybody else. Okay? Thank you. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. My pleasure, and remember everybody to smile. If you want to be on my show, remember to email me at lowvisionbureau at gmail.com. 
If you want to follow me, you can go on Twitter at Low Vision Bureau and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I hope you had a great time as I did. And just stay tuned for more interviews. So this is Alvaro from LVV Show saying good night.